I am Magdalena Baczewska and you're watching Back at Home. In today's episode, one more time, we focus on the music of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And it is my great pleasure to tell you a little bit more about his celebrated variations, which we often refer to as the Twinkle Twinkle variations, known as Ah, vous dirais-je maman in the Kirchner catalog number 265. The tune which we all know so well is actually a French folk melody which became popular in the 1760s in France. Mozart might have heard it when he visited France and based his set of variations on this melody uh, when he published them in the 1780s at the age of 25. You all know the tune very well, either as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Baba Black Sheep, or the alphabet song. Let me read you the translation of the original text. Ah, vous dirais-je maman. Ah, mommy, would I tell you what is causing my torment? Daddy wants me to reason like a grown-up. I say that sweets are better than reason. I'm sure quite a few of you would agree with that statement. Let's talk a little bit about the music. This melody could hardly be more innocent and pure, and Mozart takes it in its original form, which was, by the way, quite a popular practice during the time to take melodies that were well known and dress them in a set of variations. Mozart simply adds a left hand to accompany the melody. Now the way that variations work is that the main melody is embellished or improvised upon. Of course, in this case, the improvisation is written down for us, but we know that Mozart was a phenomenal improviser and was able to come up with entire pieces of music on the spot. Not all of it has been written down, but we are very lucky to have this set of variations as a document of how he might have improvised. In a first variation, Mozart takes the main melody and while he is not changing the left hand much, he is wrapping up the melody of the right hand in the so-called neighboring tones. So instead of hearing C, C and G, we hear the neighboring notes, which wrap up the melody. short fragments of each variation but I will make sure to include in the description of the video full performance of the entire set so you can hear what it sounds like. In the second variation it is the left hand that will get busy with the neighboring tones. Just listen. <laughs> While we hear the melody, and it is very recognizable here, you will notice additions to it already. In here, do you hear this crunchy dissonance here in the middle that gets resolved? And Mozart is introducing these crunchy dissonant sounds throughout the variation. have now heard the right hand get very busy with the 16th notes runs as well as the left hand in variation two and it was not uncommon to follow in the next variation by introducing triplets and this is exactly what Mozart does here <laughs> probably agree that it is a little more difficult to keep track of the main tune in the third variation. 
well not for long. Mozart brings the main melody right back in the following variation while giving the triplets to the left hand. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Crunchy dissonances in the right hand, Mozart adds them also in the left hand. Adding that little spicy twist to the music. Now because things are starting to get complicated, Mozart decides to relax the texture a bit and simplify everything, coming back to the original tune. So just remember the theme one more time. Variation 5 sounds like this. Mozart simply deconstructs the rhythm a little bit while using pretty much the same right and left hand notes. In variation 6, things are starting to take off again and you will hear that in the buzzing of the left hand while the right hand touches very lightly on the notes of the theme. You hear the entire variation is a buzz and we can imagine the exciting whisper that leads to this joyful explosion of a C major scale in variation 7. And I want to draw your attention also to this orchestral treatment here of the piano texture. And what I mean by that is that it's becoming very easy here to imagine a full orchestra of and double basses accompanying the violins. We must remember that although Mozart was a phenomenal keyboard player, he was also a conductor, a violinist, a violist, and wrote for the orchestra completely effortlessly and probably had the orchestra in mind at all times as he was writing music for various other instruments. You may remember from the past videos when we discussed how quickly Mozart is able to shift the moods and this is a perfect example of that from variation 7 in C major very celebratory uh, we switch immediately to a minor mode the texture becomes polyphony much more serious just notice how the voices are imitating uh, each other in the rising melody. It is much more somber, much more serious, perhaps there is even a hint of sobbing in the music. And then Mozart truly becomes very dramatic in the second half of the variation. stay down for too long. Mozart wipes away our tears right away in variation 9. And that is followed by a very virtuosic variation 10 featuring crossing of the arms which was truly a special effect on the keyboard. that makes Mozart's music so great and timeless 
is its complexity. So amid all this joy, we do hear chromatic descent, which as you know from my other videos, is a powerful symbol of grief and sadness. And let's listen to how Mozart incorporates it in this joyful variation 10. Variation 11 stands out the most in this set. With not only its tempo, Mozart marks this one adagio, but also the character. And as much fun as we had here on the keyboard, also imagining orchestral instruments, here I believe Mozart turns to opera. And I would like you to imagine the beauty of the human voice and a gorgeous aria sung here by the right hand. even a little bit of sighing in these short phrases of just two notes slurred together. Just listen. Naturally, all the ornaments, all the turns here that are uh, beautifully uh, written into the score ought to be played without rush. This is a slow movement and the treatment of these ornaments should be extremely vocal. If you feel that you cannot sing them out note by note, you are probably playing them too fast. Now as our hearts were melting in this dreamy world of variation 11, it is easy to forget about the main melody of the theme. Well, Mozart, as always, reminds us right away in this next and final variation, but not without a twist. This variation is written in 3-4, in triple meter, which is very different from the duple meter of the beginning. One, two, one, two, one. This final variation is back in allegro, a joyful quick tempo in triple meter with a buzzing left hand and the melody of the theme also adorned with quick trills. tension builds up towards the end, things get more and more busy between the hands to the point where it starts sounding like a beehive. And now we're at the point of no return. The energy just keeps rising and Mozart only crowns the set with a beautiful short coda which brings the entire piece to a grand finale. For joining me today. If you're interested in hearing the complete performance of this piece, I invite you to take a look in the description box of this video where you will find all the necessary links. As always, I invite you to subscribe to my channel where you will find many more videos on the Back at Home playlist. For now, take care and stay well.